Good afternoon, tech community, and welcome back to Stanford University. We're here at the Data and Women, or <laughs> Data, Women and Data Science. Wow, my dyslexia is having a moment. We're celebrating the neurodiverse and women here on International Women's Day at the Women and Data Science Worldwide Summit here. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube. I am so excited for our two guests we have left this afternoon. One of them works at a company I am 100% confident you've heard of. The company is Pinterest, and our next afternoon guest is is Hannah. Thank you so much for being here, Hannah. Yeah, my pleasure. It's such a great day. You can feel the energy buzzing here. I know. That's the best part of being here in person. Have you, been to, have you been to an event before here? Actually, no. This is my first time. Me yeah. too. And I will say, it's such a nice intersection of energy and excitement paired with a very nice calm an empowering mm. tone. I don't feel the kind of stressy, buzzy. You can tell there's not a lot of salespeople here. Yeah. No offense to the sales bros <laughs> of the world, but it just feels like everyone's here to learn and to empower, and it's very cool. Yeah, perfect, totally. So you are at Pinterest. First mm -hmm. of all, tell us a little bit about your job, and then I okay. want to talk about your journey to get there, but, but what do you do for Pinterest? Yeah, um, definitely. So I am currently a data science director at Pinterest. I am responsible for basically like all the pinner engagement. So we call our cons um, like our core users the pinners, right? Like you pin pinners. Uh, mm -hmm. So my my team, my org, is responsible uh, for understanding like basically all the core apps that you are looking at, like all the different surfaces, uh, search, home feed, close app, shopping behavior. So like anything like the core user experience is what my team is uh, responsible for. So data yeah. safe to say that data science is is very core to Pinterest's business yeah. and success, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah. And probably a day one priority, too. Yeah. So how did you get into data science? Great question. Um, so I would say I've always been a math nerd. That's I, great. Yeah, Don't get I shy am. when you say that. That's hot. No, not shy. Proud. Yes. I, I yes. love nerds. I'm a proud nerd. <laughs> yes. It's like that's we gotta get that the, the pride going exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I even when I first started school, I love math. You know, I've always been solving problems, always curious. Mm -hmm. I just like from day one in school, I've always like math problem, asking a lot of questions. So it's a very natural transition. Like I did math and econ at MIT. So like also very mathy, nerdy <laughs> uh, fields. And then out of school, data science. I mean, I started data science even before it became data science is a term, if you think about it, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's it, the, the field dated back and started, it's, it's about solving problems. How do you use data and math to solve problems around us to make everything better, the world better? So. Yeah, I, it was a very natural transition to me. Um, I actually started out in finance, and I was like, well, I want to do more math. <laughs> so I switched into like, data science and data analytics. And yeah, that was my journey, how I, I got into tech. Um, and you know, the Bay Area is the best place to, to be able to experience all of that energy and to be able to get in a lot of big data. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Silicon Valley is definitely not dead. Was there a moment when you were a little girl that you remember getting particularly excited about math? That's a, that's a very interesting question. Um, you know, I, I always st solve so many problems. I think like even there was a moment when I remember I had like my, um, my eyes got hurt, so I couldn't see for like a week. Oh my goodness. I was in the dark room, couldn't see, and I was so bored. I was just like, close my eyes, and I solved math problem in my head. <laughs> Amazing. That was, that was the moment when I knew that, well, you know, this is my, my life. This is like, whenever, even the, the sort of the worst moment at that point when I was yeah. like sick and couldn't do anything, couldn't even open my eyes, couldn't, I was like so much craving for a piece of pen and paper so I can solve problems. I know, so it's really. It sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. It tells me how incredible your brain is, oh, is how okay. I hear that. Yeah, but yeah. I was just like imagining all the shape in my head and I was just like, oh, I solved it in my head. That was the moment when it clicked and it was just like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Wow, and how, how old were you when that happened? I was in like, I would say eighth grade, so. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So pretty young. That's yeah. so, I love that. I can see you. That was a great description of that moment. I can see you in this very scary moment, probably with, with impaired vision. But then the thing that your mind does to keep you stimulated is to solve math problems. Yes. Yeah. I I love that. It's very clear that you've ended up in the right career path. Yeah. When you started working through your academic career, Pinterest may not have even been around yet. What is it that attracted you to working at Pinterest specifically? Mm. You know what Pinterest is like something that we're so always so proud of is we are the positive corner of the world. You, know? you really like, are. Yeah. We're here to like it's totally inspire. something to be said for that. Yeah. And like it's it's so amazing, like speaking of the energy of this conference, when I'm talking to all the conference uh, folks, who, they came to me and like, oh, you work at Pinterest. I love Pinterest. And I, I love talking to, to people, the pinners. And they're like, what, what do you use Pinterest for? And they're like, look at this. I'm like inspired. I, I use this to like set my uh, mood board and mm -hmm. it's just like all of these beautiful pictures. It makes just my life better. You know, like people always talk about like how social media, you know, mildly scrolling with a Pinterest, people are very mindful. Like it's a Zen place where you're there to like really the positive corner of the internet, I would say. It's so uh, so that's why I, um, I I was so into Pinterest and I also use it to plan for my wedding <laughs> during COVID. So it's like perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it's it's important to be a, a user of the product to know how to, to understand how to optimize it best. I do really like what you just said, though, a positive corner of the Internet. A, I don't think we have enough positive corners of the Internet. B, when you look at social media companies, and Pinterest was very much a part of that early era of them, once we were on kind of the Facebook, Twitter era, rising around the same time as Instagram, you don't see the malice and the mm -hmm. toxic behavior on Pinterest. Is that something that and I wasn't planning to ask you this, but I have to now, is that something that Pinterest is, is, I'm sure you're proud of it, but is it something that the company focuses on? Is that something that's a part of your data science approach? Yeah, definitely. I think like data science for gut and data science for social impact is something that I think we don't talk enough about. Like we Agreed. can do so much good uh, with data. I mean, we could also do much bad with data too, but like when you mindfold of the power of data, right? Like the power of what you can do with Absolutely. like the implication of the models of the insights you bring to the table and how does that feel all the decisions and knowing and being aware of all of that is so important. So I think like as a company, we very much care about like, like I said, I think this is, is the model. Like I didn't even have to think about it. It's just like the positive corner of the, yeah. of, the, uh, of the internet is what everyone thinks about and care about at the company. So uh, being able to do data science in a company like that is very exciting. Yeah, and I bet it makes yeah. it so you can sleep at night. Yeah, you're not doing content <laughs> moderation at Meta. You're, you know, you're looking at you're looking at wedding dresses. No, no, no comment on the other ones, but yeah. yeah. Were you? I, I mean, I'll make that comment as an analyst. <laughs> were Were you using Pinterest before your wedding? Um, I was started using it for like organizing ideas from my house, mm. but like really intense, intense using it was when I like the wedding, and then when we got the house, and we we're like, oh where should I put things and like all these beautiful ideas I want to put to collect. It's just like building your dream life, you yes. know, like putting your dream together. Yes. Is, uh, is how I see it. You know, it's not just like a moment in time when you sort of mindless forgetting and like trying to run away from your real, real life here. You, you putting your real life in there and making it better. So. So that's that's why I love about it. Yeah. I think that's really well said. You're curating and you're staging your dream life. Yeah, I mean, exactly. twist my arm. That sounds pretty. Fat. You're gonna make <laughs> me want to use Pinterest again. I haven't used Pinterest in a hot minute, but I'm feeling <laughs> feeling actually a little inspired about that. And I love thinking about it as a as a positive corner. Do you are there anything? Is there anything you have to do as a data science at Pinterest to combat negative or nefarious behavior? I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things. I'm actually not work in the, those teams, and I don't know what I could say. Yeah, like, well, that's uh, I mean, that just that means a lot. Yeah. Um, the team that we're working on, the team that I'm working on, is very much focusing on like how do we bring the most positive and like beautiful experience to users. Right? Like, if you're looking at the home feed, you're looking at the search behavior, and most recently, we're looking at shopping. How do we make it all coming together, right? Like all of the behaviors, all of the intent, like people are here to shop, people are here to, uh, to dream, to plan, to build their life. Like how do we put all of those in a very like um, 
streamlined way, like seamless way. People don't have to think. Yeah, it, and and how can you think. how can you predict or be intuitive yeah. to their desires and needs exactly. on the platform? Yeah, which could vary by visit. Yeah. Maybe sometimes I do want to shop. Sometimes I want to curate my yeah. dream wedding list or whatever that might exactly. be. Exactly, like you don't want to push things in front of people that like they don't want to see, right? Like you right. want to make it. Like basically optimize for people's happiness. <laughs> Think about it that way. Yeah. Well, it, it is really interesting too. So I'm wondering if you work on this team, and if, obviously, if you don't, it's okay. But I'm curious. So, it's like an Insta, for example. The algorithm. I've been going through some grief, and then recently, I've had some positive things happen in my personal life. Mm -hmm. So I get hit with a very unique cross section of both sad and very happy memes. Mm -hmm. Do you do you have to be? A, do, are you a part of the crew that weighs what people are served when they arrive to Pinterest on a given day? Uh, yeah. So I think like so we have the search. Um, um, we have the search surface and we have the home feed surface, right? So home feed is when you just go in and you just like browsing and there's no particular search term that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And the search one is like, let's say I want, I don't know, like wedding ideas, outfit idea or like dinner party, work outfit. So those are two different use cases people have. Sometimes right. people come in with very specific ideas they have in mind that like, hey, I want to build up my wardrobe for the spring. So that's the search one. And the home feed one is when basically like based on people's previous behavior to um, to serve people what is like what they would like the most suitable for them mm -hmm. is what is what we see it on the home feed. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So kind of balancing what they may be coming to do looking forward versus yeah. what we know is going to be something they've always enjoyed. Yeah. Interesting exactly. balance of predictive and existing data there, too, yeah, actually, exactly. which is rad. We've got a lot of really empowered, awesome women in data science here in this room, yourself included. What would your advice be to a woman thinking about embarking on a career in this space? Yeah, I love this question because, I mean, I remember years ago when I was that, mm -hmm. when it was that woman, right? Like, I always wished, oh, I would love to talk to people who's ahead of me in the careers and what. So now I'm thinking about, well, like me at that point, what would I tell them? Or like talking to all the women. Uh, very inspiring woman that I meet today. What do I tell them? I I would say, you know, do it. Like, I, I know it sounds a little corny, but like, follow your dream is, is the only thing I can say. Like, you can't plan everything in life. Mm -hmm. um, like, there's certain thing, obviously, like, you, you maybe plan, like, two years, three years ahead, but not everything's going to happen like you exactly planned. So I think put in a lot of effort, doing, do a lot of due diligence, work hard, ask for things, ask for support. You yeah. Know? Um, we don't do that enough, I feel like, as women. We yeah. Don't, we, I totally agree. We, we need something, we ask for it. Like, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take, right? can't get what you don't ask for either. It, it's no, it, no one's going to know you needed it. Exactly. Yeah. And, like, ask for even things like, sometimes people are like, I don't know what I want. Talk to people. How mm -hmm. else would you know what you want until you talk to people? Like that's the the most basic question, uh, ba advice I give to folks who are in school. And when they're like, "Oh, I did, what are the tracks of data science?" and I'll be, I would tell them, "Hey, I can tell you. Like, do some basic search online. There are like few different tracks, like data engineering, data analytics, machine yeah. learning, inference. Read some blogs. Read about it. Do your research." And then talk to, go to these conferences, talk yeah. to people, ask them about what the day-to-day -day looks like. Mm -hmm. Get a sense of like, oh, do I want to be that person? That person sounds awesome. Their job is amazing. Or they're like, nah, I don't really want to do that. Like, that's both of that is really good to know because you don't want to like sort of chasing what all of your peers are doing because it's sort of like the trend of heart and you get into it and you just turn out you really don't like your day-to-day. -day. So I think talking to these people like you you all have such a great network i think like nowadays you have like alumni network you go to conferences talk to them and get a sense of what it's like what you want find out what you want first and then get for advice right i feel like i always love to help people know likewise yeah, yeah. right like know the right questions to ask i think it's very important to right like help them to help you um i think that's great it, advice yeah and especially i i, I just want to Double down on what you just said. So many people think about work as a job title or as mm -hmm. perhaps the, 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 the 
cream at the top of that layer of what that job really looks like or the rest of the iceberg underneath what it is. You know, mm. people think of a lawyer and they think of being in a courtroom and doing trial law, which is actually <laughs> a fingernail of what, uh, you know, of, of the body of what a, a lawyer does or what most people do. It's it's the same thing. It's the same thing here. I mean, mm. we've got we've got opportunities where you can you you won't know unless you talk to someone who is a data science I, and until talking to you about how you're thinking about curating the home feed for example or the decisions you're making or whatever that might be you won't know what your day is going to look like and we spend so much time working you don't yeah. want to spend your day doing something you absolutely hate no matter how much money it makes yeah. and that's just the reality it'll get you anyway what is your advice for the allies in our world empowering women like us in our space yeah i think um i i love it you know because at the years ago, when I started thinking about like, empowering women, I focused so much on what should women do. And I think equally a part of it is how should we educate allies to do and help us too, right? It shouldn't be put all the responsibility on the women mm -hmm. to put themselves out there to ask for help. I think as allies, there's so much we can do. I would say that like, talk to the women that you care about in your life. 100%. Understand the struggles, right? Like a lot of the time, it's hard to put like in, the, in your, yourself and other people's shoes, right? It's, it's so hard to know that, okay, maybe like as a man, it's, it's so natural. It's like you, you can't think about it. So just talk to the woman in your life, understand what you need, ask how you can help. It's like, if you don't know, just ask. Um, I think nowadays sometimes people are just like worried about it mm -hmm. and just like not sure what to say. Agree. Yeah, like just have good intent. That's all. That's all I can say, right? Like, I want to make the barrier to help mm -hmm. for allies to help lower, <laughs> right? So and clearer. Just, yeah, clear. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. So I think as women, I'm doing my best to tell them what I need, but at the same time, I encourage them to like, hey, if you don't know, just ask. There's no problem. We, as long as you have good intent, it's all good. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The so. best amongst us are not going to get mad at you for asking to, <laughs> yeah. to help. And, and yeah. frankly, you brought up another good point there, which is just listen. Yeah. And don't listen with the goal of talking. Listen with the goal of listening. Yeah. And and learning That's a very bit. That's well said. Yeah. I, I, I love it. Those were great pieces of advice. All right, Hannah, last question for you. It is International Women's Day, and we are here to celebrate the women in our lives uh, and the women on this stage. Is there anyone you'd like to give a special shout out to today? Yes, there is. Um, my mom. Mm. Uh, I know she's not watching this as she's in Vietnam, so. She'll be watching it to tomorrow. Yeah, she'll, she'll be, be watching it replay. tomorrow. Hi, mom. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Sending mom. Sending love from Stanford. Yeah, um, yeah, I'd love to say thank you. Shout out to my mom. Without her, I wouldn't be here. Um, she's. A beautiful, super smart woman uh, who has inspired me to nothing is impossible, literally, right? Like, um, I'm here today, where I am today is because of her. So, thank you, Mom. Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. Hannah. And clearly, you have followed her advice and empowered yourself to be an absolute baller. Very proud to have you today on the show. Yeah. Thank you so much thank for being so much. here. Yeah. This was such a joy. <laughs> and thank all of you for tuning in to theCUBE's all-day coverage here at a Women in Data Science Worldwide Annual Event at Stanford. My name is Savannah Peterson. My heart feels full and big, and I hope yours does too. Thanks for tuning in to theCUBE, the leading source for baddies in tech.